episode story number 17, Niffle and the Puppet Maker's Wish. A few hours ago inside Niffle's cavern, filled with the gentle glow of countless dream bottles which sit on shelves, carved into rocky walls and little nooks, he is busy walking when he hears a soft call echoing through the dream world, pulling him towards the earth plane, more urgent than usual. Oh, someone's calling for that dream. I wonder who it could be. No time to waste. Niffle looks through his Dreamkeeper records and finds the owner to the dream bottle. Oh, it's Eldrick, the puppet maker. A very special dream, but it's more than a dream. Oh, but a wish. Meanwhile, on the Earth plane, it's Halloween, the time when the veil between the two worlds is the thinnest. Eldrick is in his shop, working below his home, trying to sew together a green witch puppet for a customer, which is due within the next few days. But his old hands and eyes are not as they used to be. He is not his usual magical self, filled with remorse and lower mood, being very alone. Ah, oh, these tiny stitches! If only I had the strength in my hands and my eyes like that of my younger self. Oh. In the process, he knocks over his tea, leaving a small puddle of liquid all over his worktop. Oh, damn it! That's it for today. I'm calling it a night. Frustrated, Eldrick leaves his unfinished work and the mess on the bench, turns the shop lights off and heads upstairs to bed, hoping for a better day tomorrow. A few hours later, Niffle clicks his fingers, teleporting to Eldrick's bedroom located above his shop. Niffle steps closer, looking for him as he is fast asleep. Where are you, sir? I have a little dream for you. Don't be hiding from Niffle. <laughs> we got some work to do. Niffle locates Eldrick, teleports to the top of his bed, uncorks the bottle, and lets the dream take to Eldrick's mind. Sweet dream, sir. Enjoy your success. But there is something wrong with the dream. The energy floods his mind but the rest of it travels out the bedroom door and downstairs to the shop below. No! Come back, naughty dream! Ah. Niffle teleports downstairs to try and catch the dream just in time, but it stops and hovers over the man's unfinished work and doesn't move, but just circulating over his workbench. Oh, come here, you naughty dream! The full moon shines through the window, illuminating the green witch puppet in his workshop. Niffle stops to inspect the unfinished puppet, then looks around. The shop of custom handmade puppets and toys is filled with the scent of fabric, leather and wood that sweeps through the place. Niffle listens to the dream mist circulating the puppet. Oh, his wish to be finished and his business to be successful. Such beautiful work, but he needs a little bit of help. What to do? As Niffle ponders, walking around on the man's bench, he leaves a trail of footprints of tea all over the worktop and paperwork. Since the veil between the two worlds is thin, Niffle's presence is more than non-physical this day on All Hallows' Eve. I know. I have an idea. I recall Mead. Niffle snaps a tiny twig to call upon Mead, the Dreamweaver. Suddenly, within seconds, Mead appears through a portal next to Niffle on the worktop. Well, hello there, my friend. What seems to be the problem? Mead, the dream energy is stuck and hovering over the puppet maker's unfinished work, and it won't move. What should we do? Ah, uh, it's rare, but at times this happens. It's a wish. We must act. We should never interfere with humans, but we can always leave a little bit of magic, eh? He says, winking with confidence. And with that thought, and with a wave of his tiny hand, Mead reaches into his little pouch to grab a handful of astral dust and springs it over Eldrick's dream energy and ignites it with his cane. A short blast of white light appears, followed by the unfinished work of the puppet's clothing being sewn together in the air, then landing on the workshop finished. Oh, fiddle me sticks! I didn't think that would happen! I thought the dream would just create some manifestation energy in the workshop. I was wrong. Mid, I think we have done something wrong. We must leave immediately. I Niffle. It's best not to be seen. It's best leave. With a snap of his fingers and a tap of Mead's cane, they both vanish from the shop. All that's left is Niffle's footprints glistening in the moonlight. The night passes, followed by the sun breaking through the window. In turn, waking Eldrick up. He vividly remembers his dream of bustling success and joyful creations, and his puppet's clothing all finished. Feeling a lot more optimistic, he walks downstairs to his bench to start his day. 
but Eldrick gets a shock. By the stars! How? Who could have done this? He marvels at the completed work, each tiny stitch perfect, each detail immaculate. His eyes well up with tears and gratitude and wonder. Then he notices the tiny, shimmering, damp footprints on the surface of his workbench from the tea that he spilt. Look at the stitching! It's exquisite! But I've never seen such tiny feet before. Has one of my puppets come to life on Halloween? Surely not. Or was this the work of pixies or fairies? He says, scratching his head. Touched and inspired, it sparked old feelings of magic and wonder in Eldrick and so he decides to make a gift for his mysterious helper. He picks out the finest leather and starts crafting a pair of tiny shoes to match the footprints, pouring his heart and soul into each stitch. (laughs) This is going to be wonderful! He thought to himself, even if this mysterious being won't want them, it would be a reminder from the bizarre events of what he has just witnessed. There we go for you, strange visitor. Thank you to whoever you are. My customers are going to love the finished puppet. Later that day, Eldrick contacted his customers and told them that the puppet is ready and they are happy to collect whenever they are free. The puppet maker, being a widower, in the process, left a note for he had no idea if this was the work of fairies or pixies, but he had one wish for many years, to find love and be loved once again. Dear magical friend, I woke up this morning to find my workbench transformed. The unfinished costumes I have left are now completed with such exquisite detail and care that it brought tears to my eyes. I cannot express the depth of gratitude for your kindness and magical touch. Your tiny footprints left behind tell me that a being of wonder visited my humble shop. You have given me hope and renewed my spirit when I needed it the most. As a token of my appreciation, I have made these tiny shoes for you, grafted with other love and gratitude in my heart. Thank you, dear friend, for bringing my dreams to life and filling my world with magic. With heartfelt thanks, if you have the magic to do this, can you help me find love once again? Eldrick the Puppet Maker. And with that thought, he closed the shop early and headed off to bed to rest for the evening. That night in the cavern, Niffle hears a soft hum and feels a warmth in the air while Eldrick's empty bottle vibrates. Niffle clicks his fingers to teleport back to Eldrick's shop, curious about what had happened. First hiding behind the wall, then coming out to see the workbench where he finds the tiny shoes, perfectly sized for him, placed lovingly on the workbench with the note. Oh, he made this for me? How kind. He wants love. Hmm. Niffle jumps into the tiny shoes, feeling a perfect fit. He is so delighted. Oh, so comfortable and soft. And then he ponders. He can't leave the shoes there physically. It would break Eldrick's heart. He thinks of Luna, the only person he knows on the Earth plane. So Niffle thinks really hard and clicks his fingers over the shoes to transport them to Luna's charm box. And in the process, dips his hand into Eldrix's cold tea to sign his note with the handprint. But it doesn't work. Oh, if it was only Halloween, he said, and so Niffle energetically takes his new shoes back with him to the cavern to the dream world. The next morning, Eldrick rushes downstairs to see if the shoes are still there, and to his surprise, they are gone. On his note was indeed a very, very faint, tiny handprint. Thank you, my tiny friend. Thank you for bringing my dreams to life. Just look at the tiny hand, he says, picking up his note with joy. The bond between the dream world and the earth plane grows ever stronger. What does Niffle do next to bring dreams into reality? The stories continue in the dreams yet to come.